Hello friends, it's lovely to be back with a new layout to share with you today. I'm going to be using a lovely cut file from Paige Taylor Evans, it's called Pennant Banners and I'm going to be backing it with this lovely piece of pattern paper from Paige's Splendid Collection. I absolutely adore the black and white florals on the A side of this pattern paper, so I'm going to be using it to back each of the little triangles on the banner. To back the cut file, I turn the cut file upside down onto the reverse side of the patterned paper and I draw a line around the center of each of those triangles. I then cut each triangle out. Now I don't cut exactly on the line because that line represents the center of that triangle so it needs to be slightly bigger so I can stick it onto the reverse side of the cut file. So I kind of follow along the line but slightly bigger um, so that there's a, a good, good enough area to stick. One of the reasons why I absolutely love this black and white floral is that it complements bright colours so beautifully. As you may well know, I love brightly coloured layouts and um, I usually include so much colour and sometimes that bright colour is so beautifully offset by black and whites. So I'm using that here but I do want to include lots and lots of colourful rainbow colour. So I'm adding a little bit of Distress Inks onto each of those little triangles and I'm going to be going in rainbow sequence. Um, you will notice as we go along that I stick one of them in the wrong place, so it kind of muddles up that sequence a bit, but it doesn't affect the, the overall look, thankfully. I will link up all the colors that I'm using and all the pattern papers and products. Um, I'll link them up in the description, so don't worry to note anything down. It'll all be there for you. Now, there's no rhyme or reason really as to why I'm adding color to certain parts of the triangles. I just kind of want them to have pops of colour in different, in different areas. Um, you'll see at the end of the layout um, I add florals and in retrospect if I had planned it all out in my head I could have added the colours more purposefully to exactly where the flowers were going to be and the different embellishments but I don't really usually work like that. <laughs> I might have a, a bit of an idea of a layout in my head at the start but it's invariably changes and evolves as we go along so um, I'm just adding color where I feel I think it'll look nice and just to kind of give the the page some balance of color and um, I'm quite happy with with where everything is. I'm using these cute little adorbers from scrapbook.com and they've got like a velcro dome that you can kind of interchange so I've got one for each color and then I can just swap them out and just you only really need one of the little sticks to hold it and then you can just swap out the different domed heads which is great and it you know saves on storage saves on money and then it's easy also to replace the little dome bits because once they've been used quite a lot um, the foam does start to disintegrate a little bit now I've, I've had mine for quite a while and I do use them quite a lot and I've only had one that I've had to replace um, and I think it was my yellow one because I use that a lot <laughs> for lots of sunshines um, but yeah, they, they last quite well. Now I'm just adding a little bit of this Nouveau Deluxe adhesive just to the reverse of this cut file and sticking, sticking each piece down. And this is where I muddled up the sequence. I accidentally cut a little wedge out of the dark green triangle when I should have actually done it with the yellow one. Um, and that's why I was kind of forced to change the sequence a bit. But it was a happy accident because I then decided to add this a sunburst using this stencil and if the yellow had been swapped with the dark green one it wouldn't have really worked <laughs> in that position so it all worked out in the end. So I choose to look at it as a marvelous mistake because I've managed to turn it into something that I absolutely love instead of it being a huge big problem which it absolutely wasn't. So now I'm using the stencil and just dabbing my dauber onto the mini ink cube and adding color. I am not taking the rays all the way to the edge of the stencil. I don't want those rays to be cut off with a sharp edge. I want them to kind of fade into the background. So I'm starting with more intense color in the center and then I'm kind of fading it out by just tapping a little bit softer as I progress along those sun rays. Then I lift the stencil up and I shift it slightly and as, as you put it down you will see if the stencil is on top of the color you've already added or if it's now on the in-between bits. So I'm trying to fill in some of those in-between bits 
but also wanting to overlap some of the stenciling I've already done as well. So I really want those sun rays to kind of like overlap and just to give a glowing effect. Now, once I'm happy with the sunshine, I want to add a little bit more to the background. I want to just add a little bit of extra interest and and I do want to have a tone on tone effect. So behind each of those little triangles, I want to have the coordinating color. And I start off with this kind of plaid checkered stencil, but then I'm not 100% sure with how that looks. So I go in then with the spotty stencil and this is the one I end up going with. So I've made another marvelous mistake, but it doesn't matter because there's gonna be other bits and bobs covering that. So try not to let little changes of plan affects you progressing forward with your layout because there's always a way to to change them fix them make a different plan i use tone on tone quite a lot for anyone that doesn't know what tone on tone is i refer to it quite a bit usually in my process videos it's when you're adding the same color on top of the same color so my background is going to have the same shades of color behind each of those little triangles and then my embellishments are also going to match those colors. So I'm going to be putting blue on blue, green on green, pink on pink, etc. And I really love that way of embellishing and um, it's pleasing to my eye and I like the balance that it's, it creates. Um, something else I also really love, <laughs> which some of you may be well aware of, is I love the rainbow sequence of colors. Again, it's just so pleasing to my eye. I love that sequence of colors. So these are some of the techniques that I often tend to stick with um, as my standard when I'm creating a layout. So you can see the, the kind of effect of those little spots. So I go in with the stencil, I add a, a layer of color, and then I shift it a little bit and move it just so I've got some spots kind of overtaking the other spots. Some are darker, some are softer. Um, I don't want it to be a uniformed kind of layer of spots. I want them to be overlapping each other and um, have a little bit of visual dimension and interest and to just look really natural. I feel that in the natural world, things are always overlapping each other and you know intertwined and I kind of like that feel on my layouts as well. Um, kind of minimizing uniformity <laughs> but still having balance <laughs> anyway I'm going to continue and just go through each color and I want to overlap the colors with the neighboring color so this green is going to overlap with the lighter green that's next to it just to kind of have like a good flow so that you've not got one color stopping and then the next one starting they're just going to kind of flow into each other a little bit like an ombre um, effect. I was really torn as to whether to keep all of the stenciling in the video. I would love your thoughts. Please feel free to leave me a comment. I'd love to improve my videos going forward for you. I opted to keep it all in because I thought some of you might appreciate seeing the full process of, of how I add all the, the colour to the background, but I appreciate for many it might be quite boring, so feel free to skip this bit. <laughs> Now I'm not far off finishing the stenciling. I'm making sure a good portion of those spots are peeking out from behind the pennant banners and I am going to have some of those spots coming out the top of them as well. So kind of fading into the background above each of the top row of those triangles too. Like I said earlier, any products that I've used, I will link them up for you below. Any links from scrapbook.com, I will get a small commission if you choose to purchase through my links. If you do, thank you so much in advance. I'm really grateful for, for all your support, but please also feel free to support your local scrapbook store. I definitely want to keep scrapbooking alive and stores open, so support the store that you prefer to use. Well done if you have stuck with me so far through all of that stenciling. Now I want to add more colour to each of those triangle banners. I have got some lovely patterned papers from Paige Evans collections, there's a variety there and each of those scraps of paper that I'm using tie in with the ink that I've used on each of those triangles. So I'm just going to cut thin strips and I'm going to punch one of the sides and then stick them on the reverse so you've got just like a little lacy edge peeking out from behind and then I go ahead and then trim off the excess so I'm keeping it simple I don't pre-measure anything and I'm not kind of 
at this point trying to line up the scallops with any particular portion of the triangle. As I go along, I do kind of figure out what I'm doing and then try to make sure that the end of each of those triangles has a, a nice neat finish to it. I've cut out the majority of the footage of me adding the border punches to each of these triangles because, you know, one is the same as the other really, but I have kept this bit in because I actually separate the cut files so that I can properly add the border punched strips to some of these triangles. So where they overlap, it's, it's obviously more tricky to, to add the border punch bits because part of it would be behind the triangle below it but it'll be easy enough to combine them again when I stick them onto the background. Separating them has also given me the opportunity to raise them up at different levels. So the, the bottom row of triangles, I am going to stick directly onto the background and it's gonna to be totally flat. Now I take out my foam squares. I have two thicknesses of foam squares. One is thin, about a millimeter, and one is about three millimeters thick. That is a guesstimation, <laughs> um, but one is much thinner than the other. So the thinner one is going to be the middle row, that one that I'm sticking down now, and then the top row is going to be the highest row, and so it's going to give like a tiered effect. So you don't really notice this unless you see the layout up close, but I love that little bit of extra dimension, almost like those banners are kind of flapping in the breeze. Now it is finally time to embellish. <laughs> now, originally I had planned to add tone on tone embellishments to each of those little triangles. Now I've not included all of my fiddling, I've chopped out some of it from the footage and I just found that it was just too busy adding something to every one of those banners. There's already a lot of color and then adding loads of embellishments as well. I was at risk of it being so overwhelming to look at that you kind of lose focus of the photo and all the details. So I had to pare it back a little bit. Now, I've also tried a variety of different title pieces right here. You can see I've used an acrylic piece that says Sunshine and Blue Skies and I just love that one. However, it just doesn't stand out enough from the background. So I've switched it out for this one that says wonderful and that is definitely a lot bolder, but I'm just sitting it there just now. I'm not 100% sure that that's the right piece. Now, you can see I've got my paintbrush out and a little bit of water. I had opted to use a sheet of watercolor cardstock as my background. So I'm able to kind of just move this color about a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy on the background, but I just kind of want to soften some of those dots a little bit. So by adding a little bit of water, it kind of blues some of them. So they've, it almost looks like rain has fallen on onto them and kind of just disturbed the color a little bit. So that's the kind of look I'm going for. And then I just dab up the excess water so that I can carry on and not have to wait for anything to dry. <laughs> I'm going to bring my photo in now and I've opted for a black and white photo. Just like with the black and white floral pattern paper, I do love a black and white photo if there is lots and lots of color in my layout. I just feel that it helps the picture to kind of pop off the page when it's in contrast to all the color. You can see now I'm busy backing the photo with some vellum. So what I tend to do is tear a piece to go behind. I like the rough edges and then I kind of tear little strips um, to add around again so it's kind of like a double layer with pieces overlapping each other and I quite like that effect. Sometimes I add some pattern paper behind it as well but in this case I've opted just to have the torn vellum around the edges of the photo. And now I'm just kind of fiddling again with my embellishments and sticking some of them down using my Nouveau Deluxe adhesive. I love this adhesive and yeah, just kind of trying to finish off my layout. So earlier I mentioned that I'd originally wanted each of those triangles to have tone on tone embellishments, but I paired it back a little bit. So I've kind of focused embellishments up at the top, a little bit of red and or orange kind of clustered together. Then some pink ones, some on top and some peeking out from behind. Then that little green leaf kind of hanging down from the middle row of, of banners. And then I've kind of left that middle row quite simple with regards to embellishments focusing more at the top and more at the bottom 
Then I've got some lighter blue ones to the left of the photo and then just one tiny blue flower that's a darker shade peeking out from behind the right side of my photo. Just kind of clustering around that photo to draw your eye to the picture and then a couple little purple flowers by the purple triangle. So <laughs> I've got something nearly for all the colors, but instead of having them kind of stuck on each of the triangles individually, I've clustered them together um, so that it kind of draws focus a little bit more. And later on, I also add a single bright yellow butterfly to the yellow triangle. And I stuck down my photo using some foam squares just to kind of raise it up off the background a little bit. Now, I am putting some white acrylic paint onto those black and white florals on the yellow and light green triangles. And the reason I'm doing that is because while I was working with this layout, I didn't feel like that acrylic title stood out enough from the background. So I wanted to lighten the black that was in the background so that the black lettering could really kind of pop out and be more visible and clearer. And I love that technique for kind of just keeping the background there but just softening it a little bit so that the foreground kind of stands out a bit more. Now you can see I've removed that black acrylic piece because I'm not happy with it. So I'm auditioning loads of different <laughs> title pieces here, just trying to find the right thing. So I use um, some purple puffy words but I didn't feel that that was quite right. So I've gone for these black puffy stickers and I like that the most so far. So the black puffy stickers says loves and I'm gonna use some teeny tiny little alpha squares that says my little and then obviously it's completed with the big puffy stickers saying my, my little loves. And my little loves are my two children. And this is actually a photo that I have scrapped before. This is the first time I've scrapped a photo more than once. And in my previous layout with this photo, it was in color and included two other photos as well. So, um, but I love this one just as much as the previous layout I did. I really, really like this photo. Now I'm just adding in a few little sparkles. So I've got out a variety of sequins in different colors. I'm not adding all the colors of the rainbow. I'm kind of working around my photo. So I'm putting some below, some to the right, and some just above, kind of creating a triangle around my photo to draw your attention to the picture. You can also see from these close-ups, I've added some sparkly stickles to the center of those flowers just to add a little bit of extra shimmer and shine. Thank you so much for watching today. I really, really appreciate you stopping by and having a look. I hope something you've seen has inspired you to get creative too. And you can also find more of my work over on Instagram at Handmade Happy by Monique. Don't forget to leave me a comment and a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.